Hey guys, Media Zealot has just launched an online store, MediaZealot.com. Please go check it out if you're interested in some sweet merchandise. You'll be supporting this channel and putting me one step closer to stumbling over that elusive full-time hurdle. Anyway, let's get down to the real business. In episode 5, we'll look at a species so obsessed with destruction and genocide, they're borderline nihilistic. The race with the most obscene amount of death scenes I've had to contend with yet. You'd be forgiven for thinking these guys are made of pure explodium. The fictional villain that I'm now utterly ashamed to say scared the crap out of me as a child. This may be personal, but it's about revenge, and definitely not about purging those painful childhood memories at all. It's the Daleks. Exterminate! Daleks. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> The Daleks are an aggressive warrior race from Doctor Who. They are obsessed with wiping out all other life from the universe, and other types of Daleks, and sometimes even themselves. Really, they are just looking for any excuse to scream their gimmicky catch cry and get their gun off. Exterminator! Exterminator! They battle the Time Lords across time and space, and invade Earth at every opportunity. All for, well, no legitimate reason at all, really. The Daleks are the masters of Earth! They were originally a humanoid species, but were pushed to the verge of extinction during a nuclear war with another humanoid species on their homeworld. To save their race and create ideal soldiers, a man named Davros genetically engineered them into their current form. For the Daleks are not robots, oh no. They may have a tough looking exterior, but on the inside, they are laughably squishable and utterly helpless little pink blobs. They must be disgustingly mutated. With a limited emotional capacity and an innate fixation on hatred. It's a mutation. The Dalek race was genetically engineered. Every single emotion was removed except hate. Genetic Which is the best archetype for longevity as a species, apparently. The actual Dalek thing looks like a used piece of dirty chewing gum stuck to the inside of a rubbish bin which is as good a metaphor as any for their existence thus far. Point 1. They regard themselves as superior to all species, but their design makes them inferior in almost every conceivable way. Thankfully, that grotty little Dalek creature is justly hidden from the world by an armoured outer shell. Visually, it's somewhat an improvement over being forced to interact with a sack of genetic waste. <laughs> Though overall, the Dalek exterior still looks like the result of a pepper grinder that's smashed into a janitor's closet. I mean, yeah, this thing is good at interfacing with technology and sucking intel out of brains, but I bet it would plunge a mean toilet too. It still didn't seem to help them when their own sewers rebelled against them though and pushed them to the verge of extinction, again. Your sewers are revolting! But besides any aesthetic shortcomings, for a creature that was purpose built to conquer and kill, the Daleks have some pretty serious functionality issues. Annoyingly, the different Dalek incarnations over the years have seen vast improvements in certain areas, in a similar manner to a previous entrant in this series. Doctor Who may be the TV show with the magical ability to seamlessly replace lead actors who move on with their careers, but the Daleks change paint jobs more than the Doctor changes faces. Not to worry, because as with the later Harvesters, the Daleks' most serious civilization affecting flaws remain intact. So let's work this thing over, their eyesight. To put it mildly, the Daleks have a worse field of vision than your cataract-stricken grandfather. Yo, oh, my dear young dad, I do hope you're not going to be difficult. They are limited to viewing the world through their eye stalk, which allows them to see everything in an area that's essentially the size of a small tennis ball. And they can't move that stalk very fast either. They have to turn their head or body just to spot you. You could conceivably just run rings around a Dalek and it would never even see you. And one eye here should have zero depth perception. Not a great setup for a creature that has to aim guns at things. Thankfully, the Daleks do sometimes utilize a sensor array. Sensors. Though they only seem to use it when the plot has decided that particular Dalek will survive for another few minutes. Reception is bad! Besides vision issues, this ice stalk is also the Dalek's most serious tactical weakness. In the past, or future, god I don't know. Uh, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. A Dalek could be routed by hurling a spit wad at its ice stalk. Then you could just sit back and wait for it to panic uncontrollably. 
and tumble down the nearest incline. Even at rare times when the Daleks are at full technological strength, their weakness is still their eye stalk. The Daleks surrounded by a force field. Aim for the dome, the head, the eyepiece. That's the weak spot. My vision is in That's where you want to concentrate your fire, shielded Dalek or not. Now down to the Dalek weaponry, the exterminator gun. This thing has a pathetic range of movement and requires the Dalek to turn or swivel its torso segment just to aim the thing properly. And although they move almost silently, the Daleks will never just sneak up and quickly exterminate you with this gun. They have to start screaming for at least a few seconds first. Exterminate! Exterminate! A voice so jarring, I search for the majority of Dalek clips via spiking sound wave. You must be exterminated! 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 The Daleks are lucky that for some reason, most people who are exterminated seem to just be standing around waiting for it to happen. I kind of figured that. These Daleks wouldn't be exterminating anyone if they were facing humans with normal fight or flight responses. And then worse, we find out much later, earlier, that the Daleks need to say exterminate to reload. That's why they keep yelling exterminate, is how they reload. Okay. Okay, that's a bit weird. Loud, obnoxious, and impractical as all hell. Talkative, disruptive, and unreliable. But maybe it's not quite as bad as the Daleks' dry ice gun. Like steam, for instance, coming out of a kettle. <laughs> Any ravers out there shouldn't get too excited though, because this thing is deadly. But it's no wonder this weapon has fallen out of favour with later Daleks. Because this is a close range weapon, and Daleks are definitely not known for their close range defence capabilities. If I were a Dalek, I'd want to keep enemies as far away as possible at all times. But the most hilarious Dalek flaw is their lack of mobility. Yes. You see, the greatest adversary the Daleks ever defeated was not a Time Lord. It was the humble staircase. Elevate. In the early days of the Daleks' existence, the best way to avoid a pursuing Dalek was to simply stroll up a flight of stairs and wait them out. If you're supposed to be the superior race of the universe, why don't you try climbing after us? Bye bye! <laughs> Granted, there weren't many staircases around in the Daleks' home city, and they have since overcome this initial flaw, but it still seems like a glaring design oversight. Never know what conditions you might encounter. You must be prepared for anything. And keep in mind that the Daleks tend to technologically regress every time they suffer a massive defeat. It seems inevitable that stairs and spit wads will become their kryptonite again in time. Looking at how badly these guys are capable of manipulating their environment, I'm frankly surprised they've been able to sustain a technological civilization. Tech needs to already be at an advanced level before the Daleks can interface with it using their toilet plunger. You'd at least need a lever or something they can prod at with their grasping clamp. I mean, manipulation claw. Later Daleks seem to have given up on having any implement capable of manipulating the environment at all. It's useless, throw it away, forget it. Not that this thing was much use to begin with. They are attacking our instruments. What the hell happens when the lever or computer interface breaks? I'm scratching my head wondering how they managed to actually build anything new. Sure, they may have had automated factories and whatnot at various points of their existence. But something is going to break or need mechanically upgrading at some point, and I can't see these guys being capable of wielding a monkey wrench. The Daleks should just forget the whole civilization thing and take up a new career in pest extermination. They could actually win at that. In that case, the condition will be permanent. But the Daleks were apparently designed by Davros to save their species and act as the perfect soldier. It's a concept that was stupid from the very beginning as the Caled Society may have been suffering to a great extent, but they still had a viable breeding population of normies. Although these humanoid fascists, for some reason, initially agreed that the best way to express their superiority complex was to completely transform themselves physically. They eventually saw the error in their ways and tried to stop Davros. So really, we can blame the Daleks and all of their faults squarely on this guy. He's an absolute fruitcake. You are bonkers.
Davros also inbuilt the Daleks with the arrogance and self-importance that goes along with purported superiority. Daleks are supreme, humans are weak. The Daleks are another group of sci-fi fascists. And like most Nazis, they massively overestimate their own fitness. <laughs> For most of their history, the Daleks are operating under some sort of severe limitation. The most serious and consistent of these deficiencies is the fact that breeding or creating new Daleks is not a naturally occurring process. It requires a massive amount of effort and a high level of technology, and usually the Daleks have to rely on outside genetic material. So you created an army of Daleks out of the dead. And in most cases, help to breed new Daleks. Help me. Poor little thing. This is perhaps the most concerning aspect of their design. Their inability to reproduce by their own means. Without Davros, we have no future! If the Daleks truly follow their fascist ideology, that lets survival of the fittest run its course, and make themselves extinct within one generation. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. The Daleks also have one of these troublesome hive mind-like arrangements. Unlike other dumb hive minders, they are not completely reliant on their neural link. The Daleks, they have a hive mind, or they don't, but they have a sort of telepathic web. The path web, yes. But then the security of this info sharing arrangement is as bad as ever. At one point, their path web is hacked in five seconds flat. I hacked into it, did a master delete on all the information connected with the Doctor. And all records of the Doctor's existence deleted. Doctor! Oh. Uh, see now, uh, it's, what was that fella's name? Um, James um, um, sure, it was an imperfect traitor Dalek that did it, but half of the Dalek forces probably meet that description. You will be exterminated! Individual Dalek brains are the real problem though. Find out what they're like inside. Davros designed the Dalek mind to be primarily focused on the hatred and extermination of other species. The supreme creature, the ultimate conqueror of the universe! while also having the intellectual prowess to maintain and advance their civilization. That lock's got a billion combinations. The Dalek's a genius. It can calculate a thousand billion combinations in one second flat. And no doubt, they do come up with some impressive technology over the years. But Dalek thought patterns are limited. They don't even have the ability to properly express themselves. I love you. Exterminate! and any truly divergent thought is seen as wrong, impure, and thusly exterminated. This action contradicts the Dalek imperative! Dalek behavior is limited to rushing around squawking orders at humans and other Daleks. Designate the least important! And there's an emotion the Daleks seem to inadvertently possess. A strong proclivity to fear. That's the Doctor. The Daleks will resort to panicking and firing off their gun stick at the first whiff of trouble. A non-emotional response would be more useful. And of course, the screaming. My vision is impaired! I cannot see! <laughs> yes, these sentient pepper pots are easily shaken. Unlike other stupid advanced sci-fi villains, there is legitimately no reason for these guys to be this dumb. Their arch enemy is the Time Lord alien Doctor Who. Hello. AKA Magic Man. He always manages to come up with some bullshit. There was no need to make the Daleks incompetent enough for humans to be able to defeat them. That excuse is out the window. When old Space Wizard here can just twiddle his Watsus and magic up a solution every time. So, to stop the energy going all the way, I siphoned off the rest into a handy biomatching receptacle, namely my hand. The Daleks' poorly designed brains and their limited capacity for free thought creates one of the most seriously dire issues with this civilization, as the Daleks seem trapped in an endless cycle of destruction. Point two, their hair-brained schemes leave them constantly on the verge of extinction. Yeah. Hey? Don't I do that? The Daleks in their current form may have been a powerful race at some point in the distant past. Future? Admittedly, it's hard to get a handle on what the Daleks are up to at any given time. Because the Doctor Who timeline is a complete and utter mess. Lots of graphs and diagrams and complicated sums on my desk. But for most of their appearances, they exist on the verge of extinction. 
and despite the Doctor's involvement, their innately shitty little schemes can take a lot of the blame over this. The first part of their plan usually revolves around bringing their numbers back up to a sustainable level, and then rather than hiding away in a corner of the universe until they are all powerful, they immediately revert back to their primary mission of destroying all other life in the universe. That is a large step for someone whose mental abilities are still undisciplined. Mostly they just invade Earth and patiently wait for the Doctor to come wipe them out again. Any stage of their plan which isn't devoted to saving their race will usually involve creating a weapon of mass destruction. Even within chaotic systems, there is a pattern of limited predictability. And then there's that one time they made a ridiculously cliched attempt to destroy the universe as we know it. The destruction of reality itself! The Daleks would be a great contender for a species-wide Darwin Award, if only they would do the universe a favor and finally die off for good. If we continue desperately improvising solutions, our own efforts may ultimately kill us. But no matter what ridiculous scheme the Daleks try to implement, the Doctor will always manage to thwart their plans. So, anyone for Dodgems? Because the Daleks' greatest strategic weakness is their propensity to suffer defeat at the hands of meaningless gobbledygook. Neutrino biological inversion catalyzer. Davros said he built those Daleks out of himself. His genetic code runs through the entire race. If I can use this to lock the Crucible's transmission onto Davros himself, it destroys the Daleks. Biggest backfire in history. Shamble, bobble, dibble, dooble. What could also go before for Joe? My hope. And while Techno Babble may be the most effective weapon against them, it's also the only thing keeping them alive. Yeah, well, you know, I'm OCD, what's their excuse? It's almost as if Doctor Who isn't meant to be taken seriously. Dinosaurs on a spaceship. LOL. The Daleks' arrogance and overconfidence also sees them telling every minute detail of their plans to their enemies. What does it mean, though? It contains pure Dalek DNA! Thousands were created! All were lost, save one! Okay, but there's still one thing I don't get. We shall return to our own time and begin again! No, 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 I won't let you get away this time! I won't! If they could just keep their mouths shut, they could execute their plan in full and destroy the Doctor before lunch. And despite their bragging and brashness, when their civilization inevitably reaches its death throes, they commonly resort to begging the Doctor for help. You will save us! The Daleks were supposedly designed to be highly logical beings, though that's debatable considering their ridiculous schemes and inability to reevaluate their own priorities. If you do not learn from your mistakes, you will be doomed to repeat them. Less debatable is the Daleks' supreme lack of imagination. Are there pictures? Proven when they became stuck in a centuries-long logic war with the android Movellans, another race of irrational logic practitioners. Each one working perfectly logically to outmaneuver the other. You're caught in an impasse of logic. You've discovered the recipe for everlasting peace. Congratulations, I'm terribly pleased. That is until someone with a properly functioning brain managed to think of something unpredictable. Then of course the Daleks were defeated immediately. Obviously, the Daleks' limited intellectual capacity is to blame for their poor strategizing, and this is a fault fully acknowledged by some Daleks. Case in point, the Dalek Emperor made a group of Daleks called the Cult of Scaro, specifically designed to think differently and given the mandate to do just that without repercussions. Above and beyond the Emperor himself, their job was to imagine, think as the enemy thinks. They're so fancy they have names. Dalek Khan! And this Dalek unit does lead to some impressive new ideas, and most importantly gives the Dalek race their smartest Dalek ever. Dalek Sek, leader of the cult of Skaro. The Emperor definitely made the right call, because Dalek Sek here saved their species from extinction by rescuing millions of Daleks that were in a Time Lord prison ship, and hiding them in a void between universes at the conclusion of the last Time War. Then, when the Doctor inevitably messes those Daleks up, Sek saves the Cult of Skaro and protects the Dalek race again by doing some Time Lord level shit and phasing right out of there. Emergency temporal shift! Sure, he lost his entire army, but this Dalek is quite obviously the smartest Dalek ever, leadership skills or not. He proves his intellect again the next time we see him when he correctly determines that humans are the superior species, and starts a plan to create a human-Dalek hybrid. 
there are millions of humans and only four of us. If we are supreme, why are we not victorious? But we must remain pure. No, Dalek Thay. Our purity has brought us to extinction. This offends the other Daleks' sense of racial purity. Because of course the Daleks will never ever accept genetic material that isn't Dalek. Even though they consistently require just that. And medical supplies. And a whole bunch of other stuff they don't seem capable of creating themselves. So of course the other cult of Skyro Daleks destroy Dalek Sec and doom themselves to the very cycle they were designed to break. The space we are currently occupying will implode in approximately 3 minutes, 17 seconds. Yes, even the cult of Scaro partakes in the dumbness. The cleverest Dalek ever, and look what you've done to him. The only creature who might have led you out of the darkness and you destroyed him. After killing the greatest Dalek savior in the history of their race, the remaining cult of Skaro Daleks choose to battle a hybrid army of Dalek humans, when they had a means of killing them instantly the whole time. This of course leads to their destruction, with the only exception being Dalek Khan. <laughs> but eventually Davros gets wheeled out again to revive their race, though the Daleks always have an awkward relationship with their creator, who they technically deem as an inferior being, while also heavily relying on him to fix their inherent problems. We have an arrangement. No, 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 <laughs> no, I've got the word. You're the Daleks' pet. This Davros ain't exactly a picture of health though. I'm a jelly baby. He won't be around forever, and I doubt the Daleks would fare very well if left on their own. Point 3. So you've managed to destroy all life in the universe. Now what? Let's imagine the Daleks actually managed to achieve their final solution. Which, let's be honest, is a ridiculous proposition. Since they can't even wipe out the one low-tech species, whose planet they keep inexplicably evading. If the Daleks got their perfect little universe where only they exist, what the hell are they gonna do with their guns and their persistent urge to kill? The urge to kill is too strong! They're full of hatred and designed for murder. They aren't going to be able to deal with never popping off their gun again. It seems inevitable that this Dalek utopia would erupt into a civil war, after it's discovered that some of their kind have a few molecules out of place. After all, the Dalek obsession with purity seems to be their greatest source of division. Any Daleks who realize their society should now move away from their fixation on extermination would also no doubt be targeted as impure. But besides the fact that the Daleks left to their own devices would soon de-evolve into civil war, unsurprisingly there is something more serious that would guarantee the decisive end of the Daleks in this era. As we've seen earlier, the Daleks are extremely reliant on other species for genetic material and help in creating new Daleks. So what the hell is the master plan here? How will the Dalek species carry on, if they only have their own defunct genetic material to work with? Dear, 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 that young man gets so agitated. The Daleks aren't immortal, and there won't be any Davros, the Doctor, or humans to help them out. Ultimately, the Daleks' guiding principle would guarantee their own extinction. Those words are blasphemy! Their supremacist ideology and goal of exterminating all other life in the universe, while at the same time relying on other forms of life for their own advancement, isn't just an example of the Daleks' poor capacity for long-term thinking. It's also a bit of a conundrum to say the least. And keep in mind sometimes it only takes a mission failure to make these guys inadvertently self-destruct. Is this another cybernetic civilization destroying does not compute paradox? Yes. Three, two, one. Start running now. No!
Daleks, Bang Bang Daleks, Boom! Okay, that about wraps up another episode. Don't forget you can vote for content on Patreon, and please go to MediaZealot.com online store and check out the merchandise on offer. I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank all of my viewers. I really appreciate your words of support, and I am absolutely loving all the movie-related banter going on in the comments. I know that my upload rate is not the greatest, but rest assured I am grinding this content whenever I'm not at my day job. These episodes do take a lot of work. Thanks again for watching, please like and subscribe for more.